Hello everybody, my name is Zool, and welcome to my suggested software. Alright, hi everybody, uh, welcome to Zool Suggested Software. Today we're going to be looking at a piece of software called Actual Multiple Monitors. Now, before I get into uh, the actual details of this software, uh, let me just quickly talk about uh, the screen that you're seeing here. This is what I look at every day. Uh, usually in my videos, what you see is this monitor over here. Uh, this is a 1920 by 1080 space. This is the right hand monitor, and this is where I do most of my gaming, and this is where I make all of my videos. But there is an entire second monitor over on this side where my mouse is moving around now uh, where I have a bunch of other stuff. This is usually where I have like internet windows. Uh, sometimes I'll be watching Netflix over here while I'm doing some particularly boring task on this screen. This is also where I like to keep... Uh, for example, Spotify or iTunes open. Um, but yeah, this is basically me trying to say I use two displays. Actual Multiple Monitors is a premium multiple monitor software tool that really improves the life of multiple monitor users. As I said before, I've been using this for a very long time. It comes with a lot of really cool features such as the multi-monitor taskbar, which basically allows both of your monitors to act like their own separate displays. As you can see here, uh, the software has a lot of different features and we're going to kind of go through them and talk about them a little bit. Uh, and the first thing we're going to basically talk about is the taskbar. So the taskbar is this here. Uh, you know, you got your start menu, you got all your things, and this is probably the main reason that I use this um, piece of software because it gives me a, a taskbar for each of my monitors, which is huge. Uh, you can change it to be individual, uh, it can be mirrored so that it's just the same thing on both screens, or it can be kind of mixed. Uh, you can also kind of have uh, replacing the primary taskbar, which just creates both of these as the actual multiple monitors version of the taskbar. They're virtually indistinguishable, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. And you can also change the uh, start menu and some other kind of stuff like that for Windows 8. Uh, there's also uh, a thing here that lets you generate preview thumbnails. The software also has some really cool features for layout and monitor settings here. It allows you to select your primary display, change all of the settings, these are just things you could do in Windows, and also change the orientation of the screens if you want to have some really funky stuff going on. Uh, for example, uh, my uh, display here can actually be changed to work just like this. Uh, I have a really cool monitor stand, it lets me turn my monitor 90 degrees, and if I would like to actually look at like a really long Excel document or something like that, I can set up my monitor to work perfectly fine like that. And you can even change the kind of exact uh, place where you need to go on your monitor to kind of move over to the second monitor. Uh, you know, I can place it here so that it treats it kind of like this. You know, you can really do whatever you'd like. Uh, you can set backgrounds independently. Uh, I normally keep my left-hand screen, which is the one that you don't see uh, very often, as something a little bit more personal. Uh, you know, you know how most people kind of have something a bit more personal as their backdrop? That's normally what's over there since uh, the viewers at home are never going to see it. And then uh, this monitor here, which is the one that you guys see in almost all my videos, is always something really gray, which provides a nice high contrast if I want to put text on the screen. Uh, right now I've been using this little Star Wars one here just because, uh, well, it kind of gives me something to look at that's not a completely blank gray screen. It also has the ability to do a screensaver per monitor. Again, I don't really see the point in this, but if you'd like, you can kind of do some funky stuff where each of these has an independent screensaver. Again, there's profiling, which I don't really use since my computer basically performs the same function every time. However, if you'd like it to do some things, uh, perhaps you have an, a layout where you're working on Excel documents or, you know, you have the monitor kind of in the vertical orientation, then this would be really useful to use. Uh, finally, there's mirroring, which kind of allows you to uh, sort of mirror uh, certain areas of the monitor or the monitor itself. So you can actually mirror a uh, part of the monitor to the other monitor. Uh, and this is useful for a business environment primarily. You have one display facing me, and then you have a second display facing your customer. 
and basically you go in and you have a certain area on your screen where you can drag things and go, excuse me sir, is this what you're looking for? That kind of thing. Uh, and it kind of helps with the privacy of your employees and for yourself, so you don't have to show people your monitor. You can just show them part of the monitor. Uh, next up is the window settings, which are really cool. I normally have them off just because I don't want to get the questions from the people uh, watching the videos, but uh, actual mo multiple monitors actually adds a bunch of kind of really cool little things here. Uh, I'm going to hit apply. Uh, and then uh, you'll see a bunch of new uh, little things here, kind of like the minimize and the maximize things. And each of these has their own unique function. Uh, so for example, you have a button that allows you to swap monitors. It'll keep things in the same relative position, but just flip them over to the other monitor. So if I want this to quickly uh, move over to monitor two, I can. Uh, normally I do use this, just not when my uh, PC is running for the videos. Uh, this button here allows you to maximize this. This maximizes it to both screens. Uh, I very rarely use that because I have no reason to want things to go to two displays. Uh, but if you have maybe uh, three displays and you're doing kind of an iFinity style thing, uh, then that would actually be a really useful button for you. But I have two displays, so it doesn't make a lot of sense. The next button basically just enables desktop mirroring. We've talked about this already, so I'm not going to cover it again. Uh, the next one is to put it into a divider tile. Now we haven't done divider tiles yet, so we're not going to worry about that. And then finally, uh, this is just the window settings. Uh, so I'm going to basically do this, which is kind of how I like to keep things set up, and then hit apply. All right, so earlier I was talking about desktop dividers. Now this is a really cool feature, but I don't use it due to just the uh, very small amount of lag that sometimes happens when you're doing it. Uh, it's not very noticeable uh, in real time, but when I was recording uh, way back in the day using Cam Studio, which was uh, how I originally used to record my videos, which is a program that causes a ton of lag, uh, it caused a lot of problems for me. Uh, and it works similar to the arrow snapping uh, in Windows 7. Because uh, basically, if you move a window to the side of your screen, it makes it take up half the screen. Now, one problem with dual displays is if I move this over here, it just goes into my second monitor. Uh, so I'm not actually getting kind of like the four columns of things that I could. If you turn on tile layouts, you can actually add different tiles here. Uh, when you click the edit button, it'll open up this display. It's actually on both of my screens. And then you can decide where you would like to put a line. Uh, so for example, if I do this, uh, this uh, creates several distinct areas that I can go to. And I can do the same on my other monitor. Uh, you can move them around to wherever you want that kind of thing and then if I have a window and I'm moving it around oh, I have to hit apply first sorry if I have a window and I'm moving it around uh, again you'll you'll sort of notice just a tiny bit of lag I can actually snap it uh, by clicking on the edge to that distinct tile uh, which is cool because then I can open up uh, for example an internet browser and I can have that there or I could have the internet browser here this here and perhaps uh, again, a spreadsheet or something like that in the corner. Uh, and that's why this uh, put into divider button does. It basically toggles where it is on the current displays tile. But again, uh, you can see the power in this right here in that you can basically uh, divide the monitor up as much as you would like. Uh, and this is going to be really useful for those of you with like 4K displays, because 4K displays are a little bit unruly to organize things. But if you think about it, a 4K display actually has four 1080p uh, spots on it. So if you broke up your monitor like this on a 4K display, uh, then this is four 1080p monitors that you can look at. So you could have a full 1080p video running here, uh, a full web page perhaps, uh, fully like this, and then uh, just for good measure, a second 1080p video running down in the corner. Uh, and they'll snap and fit perfectly fine. Actual multiple monitors also feature some really cool hotkeys. Uh, and they're all really customizable, uh, and they basically allow you to do uh, things with the windows to specific monitors. Probably the most noteworthy of these hotkeys is the lock cursor to monitor key. This is the one that I use more than anything. In certain games, for example, uh, Total War, you generally use edge scrolling to kind of move around the map, or at least I do, so you move your mouse to the side of the screen. However, when you have dual displays, certain games fail to lock your mouse cursor into the screen, which can cause problems. In Total War Attila, for example, if I move my mouse to the left, it will go flying off and go on my second monitor, not scroll the screen. 
All I have to do is hit the uh, key, which in my case is Control alt l and it'll lock my cursor to that display. Uh, just remember to unlock it because you could run into problems afterwards. Other than what I've covered so far, there's also a bunch of settings in the settings menu that allows you to set this thing up pretty much exactly how you would like it. Uh, I'm not going to cover it though because I would go into too much details. If you ever need to get into this option menu while well, using actual multiple monitors, you just open it up from the taskbar just down here in the corner. But for the most part, you're never going to need to open up this menu because once you set it up, it will launch with Windows Startup and you will never need to look at that again. Uh, anyway, I've been talking for a very long time. I'm sure I'll have to cut this video down a little bit, but my name is Zool, and uh, I've suggested actual multiple monitors for any of you who use multiple monitors. If you don't think multiple monitors are worth it, trust me, they are. Multiple monitors, multiple monitors, multiple monitors, multiple monitors, multiple monitors, multiple monitors, multiple monitors. Multiple monitors.